Hello everyone, I'm Scratch. Welcome to the channel. This is a Dragon Air Silent Gods video. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day and we're back at it, guys. For whoever was wondering, where is Scratch? What happened? Did he quit Dragon Air? I haven't, guys. I've just been away for the last two weeks. I've been holiday and guess what? I just didn't have enough time to prepare enough videos to cover my entire vacation. So I have a bit of a gap for the last three or four days. Some of the videos that you've seen for the last two weeks, they kind of like made my account look like it's way behind the rest of you. And that's mainly because I recorded the videos over two weeks ago, just to kind of like try to prepare ahead, you know? So I am pretty much at the higher stages of uh, dungeons, vortex, etc. Just some of the dungeons, I feel like a couple of them, they still need a bit of a, a bit of attention to kind of like push me to the, to the higher stages. And yeah, expect to see a lot of uh, daily guides on Dragonair now that we're back. And of course, I'm going to have time to update the tier list i'm gonna try to do that this week i feel like some champions might be overrated some might be underrated so i'm gonna have to actually double check all uh, all that plus some of the names might still be off here and there so hopefully we're gonna get all that uh, sorted out and i am planning to bring in a couple of new features to the tier list so stay tuned for it but in today's video guys we're gonna do a champion spotlight on tonalan she's an absolute amazing champion so much damage that is just mind-blowing, okay? If you guys enjoy the content, make sure you smash a like, subscribe to the channel. It really, really helps a lot. And yes, guys, Tonalan, she was one of my most wanted epic champions in the Bera. And I've got her in Season 1, finally. My god, so much damage. She's probably the hardest-hitting epic champion in the game. And I'm not talking about AoE damage, guys. I'm not talking about Goblin. I'm not talking about the tower defense just when you need a champion to drop in a lot of raw damage on bosses including the vortex or dungeon bosses where either you want to break the shield either you want to melt that boss quick tonanan is the number one champion i would recommend to anyone regardless if you're planning to pair her with a lot of other wild champions or just on her own because even though she might slowly stack her passive alone she's still very very effective so let's actually quickly check the skills with a passive the hero gains an extra 20% crit rate, which is amazing because you only require 80% crit rate. Now, unfortunately, I'm still a bit off with the crit rate, but I'm working my uh, my way to it. With the battle skill, wields the double blade dealing 90% attack fire damage to the target three times. The higher the number difference between the buffs on the hero and the target, the higher the damage. So you see, the wild hero performs a check, and that actually gives her extra damage. Now, the wild actually helps the passive because each successful wild by allies grants 5% crit damage to the hero. The effect stacks up to 20 times, allowing you to have 100% extra crit damage on the champion and 20% extra crit rate, which is massive when you're building a champion, right? So it's good to pair her with other wild heroes just to speed up the process of uh, getting all this extra crit damage, the stacks, you know? Then you have the ultimate skill, pretty good time as well. Gains 20% attack up for 10 seconds, so you're going to have increased attack, which is awesome because you're going to use the ultimate, move over to the battle skill, and then you're going to be able to do all that damage while you have the attack up. And deals 160% attack fire damage to the target five times. Very, very nasty skill, like it deals so much damage and... Yes, for all the people that have Flora or other crazy champions that deal derivative damage based on other hits from uh, from allies, from passive, stuff like that. That's why Tonalan, she rocks in a team with Flora, for example. Now, I have her built on a gambler set, guys. Basically, this gives me a chance to uh, deal enemy max HP damage. So, three pieces, when they wearer deals damage, they have a 30% chance to deal 5% targets current HP through damage up to 200% of the wearer's attack. So it's something to give me a bit of extra damage. I'm actually tempted to see if uh, I'm going to use an Imperial Executioner set instead to see if this will actually deal more damage just by ignoring the defense. I'm very curious to compare them. I actually didn't have a chance to do it before. So maybe some of you guys uh, already did it. Let me know in the comments down below. But that's the helmet right here. Not the, not the best helmet. We still have uh, quite a bit of uh, room for improvement. You see, a lot of the rolls didn't actually give me a lot of crit rate. And my god, my RNG with this 
uh, with this gear, guys, is crazy. Like, I'm barely getting anything that's decent. This is just a decent piece, in my opinion. Because it didn't roll what I need for an attack champion. Yes, I got triple defense, which is nice for survivability. But damn, bro, I want more crit rate. Then I have the, the weapon. You see, again, triple HP, you know, like, why not give me some, some more crit rate? Just a little bit more. Then, of course, I have an attack chest piece. This is a fairly decent one, but look at that. It rolled me triple resistance, and it's so hard to get a bottom piece that has the main that you need and then have a couple of decent subs that's on it. I really had higher hopes for this, but hey, the RNG was not on my side. Then I have crit damage gloves, and these are actually fairly better because they rolled one on each, so I have attack, I have crit rate. I have basically what I need for this, uh, for this hero, you know, so I can't really complain. Then I have a crit damage uh, rune and I have a HP negative rune. I would love to change this to something else, either defense, preferably attack. But again, I've been very unlucky with the fire ones. Like I'm getting a lot of decent ones from the other elements, but not fire ones. Plus I need, I need to farm more uh, ancient battlefield and improve a bit my team there because how you may see, I don't actually have any legendaries from there just yet. But that's one of the dungeons that needs... Uh, a bit of a more attention requires more attention of course i have the eyeball of the giant on her this gives me so much attack it's just like a no-brainer to use it on her that being said let's actually take her in for a spin in the vortex first and then we're gonna see how well she performs in there and we're gonna do a couple of different dungeons this is the team that we are running on the vortex this is difficulty three but we're gonna reach the maximum damage so uh, we're gonna do enough enough with this team Furbart is the tank the decreased attack as well and the healer at the same time we have foley erich and tonanen as dps champions we're gonna see towards the end how they're kind of like uh, comparing with each other and we have adolfus to give us a bit of a, a bit of a shield he is bugged at the moment his healing is not actually working so i'm looking forward to the day when they're gonna change him uh, they're gonna do it in the next uh, in the next big update if i recall it correctly from uh, what i've seen in their discord in uh, in the patch notes but this is the team poison fire we do have three wild heroes in here to kind of like increase a bit the damage help each other out to basically build up their passives build up their uh, their skills to to deal more damage i will slowly try to time them uh, here and there when i need to put the defense down before uh, before i'm uh, using the the ultimate skills on the heroes. Frerbart does have the Witch's Remains artifact, which has a chance to land a bigger version of uh, defense down. But that being said, let's fast forward towards the end of the run where we're kind of like going to see the total damage uh, overall. So here we are, guys. We already lost our tank. It happens with a uh, with single hit. You know, I feel like it always kills my uh, Furbart. And we have Tonalnen with 7 million damage, 46.8% out of the entire team. Erich with 29% and we have Foley with uh, 17 or 18% in total there, which is pretty damn nuts. 15.3 million. So that actually took us to the maximum. We collected the, the highest, the highest chest in here. And I do have two heroes at level 90 at, uh, at the moment. But if we're quickly going to check the statistics, actually Foley 17.3%. I didn't had a chance to, to catch that before. And my god, Tonalnen, she's a one-man army. Almost 50% of the damage dealt, man. Absolutely insane. And in a better team, she can actually do even more damage. But let's move over to a dungeon. Another place where I love using Tonalnen is the Grave of Curse. And funny thing is that I was actually struggling, I think, on stage 6 a few weeks ago. And I was in a voice chat with a couple of buddies. And we were like, I need a Tonalnen to... To, to deal with this boss. And I went in and opened one of my Heliolite Dices and I got Tonalan and I was like, oh my God, I was over the moon because I got the champion that I that I needed in here, you know? So this is actually a pretty a pretty straightforward uh, forward moving here. She's going to melt the boss. Now I do have Dane as a second DPS, but he's mainly in here because he strips buffs. And yeah, he's not the only champion doing it, but I feel like I need that extra safety see like for example right now he didn't strip both of the both of the buffs from the boss so that can put me in a bit of a in a bit of a bad spot if uh, i'm not doing it i gotta make sure i constantly have decreased attack in here and 
Tonal Nun breaks the shield. She's just the champion that will absolutely melt this boss, okay? Like, literally melt the boss. If we're quickly gonna check a bit of damage, you see, 62% out of the damage dealt so far is just Tonal Nun. Absolutely insane that she has so much firepower to melt bosses in, in general. I do like to use her a lot on uh, the Frost domain as well, because that boss... Uh, uh, buffs with the with the shield as well now you can use different champions to dispel the shield so some of the champions will have in their kit that they have the ability to dispel shields shields in dragon air are kind of like uh, coded as a different sort of buff so a champion that will dispel buffs or or a steel buffs like dane for example will not be able to uh, have the same effect against the uh, shields you know so you need different champions or to just break the shield all around 63 percent of the damage dealt were already at 1 million now dane generally is an absolute beast of a champion when we are talking about damage you know not so powerful against bosses but just generally against the uh, bosses with minions or waves or stuff like that dane is absolutely insane you know he deals a lot of damage so just seeing that Tonal Nun is doing three times more damage. It's like, wow, you know, wow. A lot of, uh, a lot of damage from Tonal Nun. But I'm going to fast forward towards the end of the run, guys. But I'm going to show you the, the final result. So we are closer to the end of the run, guys. When Tonal Nun uses the ultimate skill on the shield, she's absolutely melting the, the shield on the boss, you know. Having decreased attack on the boss for this dungeon in particular is pretty important because if the boss has increased attack and it has all the buffs, not only that is a very high chance for, a, for him to kill some of your champions, but the shield that he's putting up is based on the damage dealt, you know? So he's going to have a massive shield, which will be much harder for you to, to drop down. And initially, my main issue with this uh, dungeon was that I didn't have enough DPS till I got Tonal Nun up, uh, up and running, you know? So she was definitely a game changer for, uh, for my account, especially when we are talking about... Uh, this this type of uh, of content you know look at that absolutely crazy we didn't have defense down to to really push push the damage even uh, even more here you know so that would have made quite a quite a bit of a difference and the shield was fairly fairly big too you know so we still have that increase uh, increase attack on the boss luckily dane comes in play and uh, puts that uh, decrease attack as well which was about to expire if i'm not mistaken and he removed the increase attack from the boss and placed it on himself because he stole it once the target is under a specific amount of uh, hp you know but there we go grave of curse stage nine not the best time that we've got but fairly decent i had no food on whatsoever you know and i feel like we've done a pretty pretty good job tonal nun 63 percent guys three million damage three million so so good initially i started with a frost and a crosses team because i had a few legendaries from uh, from the bear you know and it felt just just right to start uh, to start with them but i feel like now i really shifted towards uh, poison fire for most of the content that i have uh, that i have in the game so this is stage five and i don't think i really need hexandra in here but just for the the sake of it we're gonna we're gonna let it run you know and i do have uh aoe champions right so we have dane which at the moment he's at the top of a uh, top of the list then we have a uh, we have a uh, sigrid which deals so much damage single target and aoe if you're uh, putting the champions in uh, in the right team and tonal nun she's not really gonna be at the top of the list till she gets at the boss now once we're gonna get at the boss with tonal nun everything will actually change even here Dealing damage on single targets is pretty pretty beneficial, you know. So let's not uh, not rush to to judge her on uh, on the wave so far. You see, twenty nine percent. We have a uh, Sigrid with thirty one, Dane with thirty five percent. So she's not really at the top, but she's gonna she's gonna get her very very quick here, you know. And again, I have no food on uh, on my uh, my champions to make them deal look at that look at that just melting that uh, that boss you know quickly put her at the top just that one ultimate skill 
uh, pushed the champion to the top. And here, if I would have had the ultimate skills, I would have broken this uh, shield without a problem. But I'm not uh, creating a preset for this team. I feel like the domains are fairly, fairly easy to beat compared to other content, you know. So look at that. Melted almost 30% of the, of the HP there. 37% per, uh, now with 730k damage. Okay, we got the shield. So we got one ultimate. Pretty, pretty weak from Dane there. I don't think I'm going to get my other ultimates in time. No, unfortunately, I didn't manage to get that. But the boss just got melted. No, uh, no chance to, to retaliate. And we have... 37.2% from, uh, from uh, Tonanen with 800k. We have uh, Sigrid with 629k. And of course, we have Dane with almost 600k. But that's Tonanen, guys, in a, in a few words. Absolutely amazing. One of the best epic DPS champions in the game. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And let me know how are you guys finding the champion spotlights in Dragonair. Would you like to see more things tested while we're actually doing a champion spotlight or you're not really into them so much. Appreciate all of you guys watching. Much love and I'll catch you all soon in the next video. Peace.